Hi, I'm Josh, and this is Cars and Joshy. All right, I'm gonna salvage this stock wiring harness for whatever I can use. I was thinking battery cable stuff would be a good start. Ground strap. Modify that bracket and reuse it somewhere. I'll take this. This is a good little junction block for battery positive. I did not remove anything from this. I guess that's how I pulled it from the junkyard. <laughs> no relays, no fuses, nothing. That's pretty funny. Good thing I don't need it. I got these Ford style battery connectors because I like the extra stud that they have on them. Factory B plus instead of going here, I'm gonna go right here. Oh yeah, let me go get my my heat gun. I'm gonna heat gun the shit out of these. Mm, yeah. What? end of the coolant temperature sensor broke off inside of the plug so I don't really know how we'll get that out but I can't plug in the harness in there right now I guess I don't really need it because I'm not gonna be running coolant through here oh I used some now I'm definitely gonna need a new coolant temp sensor. I'm going to show you all what I got so far. So I got the battery cables installed. Got this going to the ground. I haven't hooked that one up yet. But I got the power coming off right here. Going up to the starter. This is part of the Terminator X wiring it says wire it directly to the battery. So positive here. I'll hook that one up in a minute. If you come back this way. That's the main harness. It's plugged into the uh, the ECM. And then you have this second harness. That's the main power harness. This is the main sensor harness. This gets hooked up to the ECM. Off of this main wiring harness, you have this line this main sensor harness. You have this line that's the wideband O2 sensor. And you have this one with the shielding on it. It wasn't labeled but in the book it's pretty obvious which one it is. It goes to the crank sensor which is back there. That was a little bit of a pain trying to get it there with the starter and everything already on there. Uh, let me find my flashlight. I'm sure y'all know where the crank sensor is on these, but if not, it's right back there. So I got that plugged in. And let's go up here. We can see. I've put a little bungee around these to kind of keep it away from the flex plate and away from the exhaust. So they're all kind of bundled right now. I guess I should have done this before I bundled them up but it's all good this big connector here is for the injector harness it's, it's part of this main sensor harness and then the injector harness comes separate 
So you have to plug the injector harness into the injector plug there. And then you have one ground here that says ground directly to the head. So I got that there. I have, since this is a LQ9, I've got the old Multec uh, injectors. And what I did was I just went on Amazon and ordered an adapter from Multec to EV6. So this does not come with the Holly kit, this little connector here. I think it was like 12 or 13 bucks for the kit, but uh, this is where the Holly stuff starts, the Holly injector harness. So they're all labeled. You can see on here, injector six, injector eight, four, two, so on. Same on the other side, injector 1357, and then got uh, idle air control, throttle position sensor. We have engine coolant temperature. These two, this one, the manual says is optional. This is fuel pressure sensor. And then map sensor back here. Uh, and then on this side, you also have a ground directly to the cylinder head. So I put put the little plug right in behind here and put it right to the cylinder head and then what else do we got you know we got your ignition connector right here same on the other side back here you have oil sensor that's optional and then you have your cam sensor that's required of course the the knock sensors are optional. Um, this is just to get it running, I, I guess, is what they're saying, what they mean by optional. But uh, the only piece that I have left that they said is required is they're calling it a manifold air temperature or mat sensor, which I can only assume is the intake air temp. I called Holly. They said the manifold air temperature sensor is usually found in the intake tubing uh, but I don't have that obviously and so what I did was I went to the parts store and I picked up a intake air temp I took out the evap solenoid and I took some sandpaper and I sanded down the solenoid just to kind of wedge it in here finished up the wiring uh, let me show you what I what I got the threw in that wasn't on there before so I've got this power wire it's supposed to go to battery straight to the battery this runs the injectors and the fuel pumps I'm not where I'm not running a fuel pump so mainly for the injectors in this setup and then what I have here is a battery positive that's going up and feeding power to this switch that acts as my ignition switch or my run switch and once you flip it over to on it sends power to this red and white stripe which is uh, the switched on for the harness and then it needs battery positive when key is in the the run position and then this solid red wire is going to this alligator clamp which goes to my remote start trigger so this essentially acts as the key when you switch it over to run and then this acts as when you flip it over that extra turn to get to start so uh, the other end of this this trigger is on the S terminal of the alternate or of the starter solenoid and so theoretically when I flip this to on I should be able to use my handheld tuner I should see the ECM come on and I should be able to, to go through the wizard and start this thing up that'll work for now to get this fired up the only other thing I have left before I do that is to hook up this air hose and 
make sure I can set the pressure to about 58 PSI. This was pretty simple. Um, nothing to it. Very, very easy. But I'll fire that up tomorrow. And I think this is going to do it for this, this video. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Thanks for watching Cars and Joshy. Josh out.